Serious. What is a conspiracy theory you actually believe in, not safe for work? Please do like, share, and subscribe. Honestly, I find the idea gold isn't at Fort Knox any more believable. In the same vein, I doubt they keep anything important at Area 51 anymore. I bet they keep the sites up so we don't look anywhere else. Why or how, I don't. For the record, serious answer. But there's this soup place at our local mall that's been there for three years now. I've never seen anyone order anything from there, and I rarely see anyone at the register. When our mall was closed due to COVID lockdowns or quarantine, several locally owned stores shut down, and a few places in the food court. Last time I was there was for my birthday in August, and the soup place is still there. My mom and I have an array of theories about what it could be, ranging from money laundering to a front for drugs, but I cannot believe that place is legitimate. That Dorothy Kilgallen didn't kill herself, and the government was responsible for JFK's assassination. I don't know why the government would do something like that, but the evidence lines up. Reporters don't kill themselves when they're days away from publishing something that would crack the JFK case wide open. Also, witnesses saw FBI agents leaving her house with documents. Plus, the only person she handed her draft to would end up dead two days later. The draft, of course, went missing, and the investigation into her death was laughable. Everyone's going heavy with theirs, but I have one that's less serious. Baby wipe containers are purposely made so that you always pull two to three wipes at a time, and therefore need to buy more often. It's definitely something I can see Big Wipe engaging in to get just a few more containers out of us each year. Reagan was diagnosed with Alzheimer's when he was still in office and his advisors told him to write a letter to the American people to be released later after it got too bad to hide. When his condition went public in 1994, they released the letter and it was almost perfect handwriting, spelling and grammar. Six months later, he couldn't carry on a conversation. I'm convinced he didn't progress that fast in 1994 and that the entire thing was constructed over the years to look like he was mentally competent while he was president. The conspiracy that created the term conspiracy theory. Think back to the 30s, 40s, 50s. There were stories of the black cars showing up and making people that start finding out too much disappear. Enter the 60s and 70s. Mass media starts growing at a massive rate, a rate at which the government realizes that they cannot ever fully control. Their genius solution is to open the floodgates of crazy, push a bunch of conspiracy theories into the populace that make real conspiracy reports be ignored as just tinfoil hat crazy. Label all reports as conspiracy theory. This, over time, creates a societal misunderstanding in the form of the term conspiracy theory, becoming equated with crazy. An example of this is I believe that there really aren't many people that truly believe the earth is flat. There are just some entities planted that push it as a theory. This then becomes one of the main examples of all conspiracy theorists are not to be taken seriously. Deflate Gate was a distraction from brain damage and domestic abuse scandal in the NFL, and I say this as someone who hates Tom Brady. It should have just been a small fine and forgotten quickly, but this is the type of scandal the NFL can tolerate, whereas brain injuries and domestic abuse can hurt the league's reputation, and it worked. Distraction and news cycle dominated by this for an entire offseason rather than more serious issues. This might not be a groundbreaking hot take, but I think that applying for disability status or benefits is intentionally made to be a convoluted mess of bureaucratic jargon and endless hoops to jump through solely so that the disabled don't take advantage of them, either because they give up trying to navigate an intentionally confusing system or because they make a mistake along the way and the process gets fucked up. I'm really lucky I had my mom helping me with a lot of the paperwork because otherwise I would never be able to get the supports I need in a post-secondary. It's like someone purposefully designed the process to be unobtainable, messy, and overwhelmingly complex for a disabled person as they possibly could. Try the VA. Dollar Slice Pizza Places This may not make sense to people who don't live in New York City. We have these great places that sell a plain slice of pizza, cheese only, for $1. I can't believe they make rent and payroll on a volume with $1 a slice and the going rent rates. This has to be some sort of money laundering scam, but one where no one cares because you get a slice of pizza for a dollar. Might not be the best pizza, but damn, a dollar slice? I'll always stop in if I'm passing one on the street. 
This just can't be economically feasible, and something else is going on. Certain ultra-wealthy rich have slowly politicized the news over the past decades in the way of brainwashing the population into believing their agenda. Along with possibly having multiple news channels, e.g. left or right-leaning channels, to attract more viewers, so if they don't like one, they may go into the other one, which they agree with more. Additionally, increasing the entertainment part of the news and decreasing the news and educational parts of the news. That the international establishment are not cracking down on the slave trade because too many of them benefit from slaves, wage slaves, debt slaves, indentured servants, passport hostage victims, Magdalene laundresses, unpaid internships, etc. themselves. Human history. The government watches, but not on an individual level. Like they don't read every email and text you send is more like they and algorithm that filters off the metadata of the people and use that to determine the possible dangers to his own. That rogue and non-rogue members in the FBI, CIA, and Mafia conspired to kill and killed JFK, RFK, MLK, and Malcolm X. We have documented proof the government worked with the mob on a couple different occasions. I think the proof is there to connect all the dots. Just my opinion. The Secret Service is also the group in charge of keeping all retired and past government officials quiet. It's crazy to think that all of these powerful people don't spill their knowledge at some point before they die. Once they get a certain clearance, then a detailed profile is built of who their family and friends are and somehow passed to them as a keep your mouth shut or things will happen to these people. Whenever a popular congressman voluntarily retires in the middle of their term, I think that they keep learning shit that they wish they hadn't and that it's time to just get out. The media is the biggest shit stirrer of fear and anger and use it in order to stay relevant to keep the funds rolling in. A effing men. The VA provides substandard care to lower the life expectancy of veterans because they're expensive to treat. Oof. Mine is strange and has to do with Grinder, but I've been testing an idea, not a scientist, so I could be absolutely convincing myself it's happening, that I think is actually being implemented on their app. In a nutshell, Grindr tracks which guys get clicked on most and then an algorithm, assuming they have one that chooses which profiles you see, will cause an ad to pop up every time you click on said profile. Since attractive guys would supposedly get more attention, it would make sense to trigger an ad to pop up when users click on the popular profiles. That the media on all sides of an any argument intentionally promotes the most extreme points of view to keep the people divided, so they never reach consensus and are easy to control and manipulate. Double amen. They're trying to get us stuck in perpetual fear and apathy, so that we don't make plans for our own futures and instead buy things now and fall in line with what agendas they want to push. The Tianjin explosion was a result of China either working on or moving dangerous materials, and while explosions were non-nuclear, materials were radioactive. Radioactive slag was found nearby afterwards as well as the epicenter of the explosion doesn't match the official reports. Later, deleted satellite photos showed the explosion was either on the street or below in the sewers access tunnels, not within a nearby factory like China suggests. Not a huge conspiracy just China trying to keep its nuclear energy weapons information hush-hush after a mishap. Well, I don't actually believe the government is putting stuff in our water that turns the frogs gay. I do, however, believe the large amount of urine containing birth control waste getting out into the sewage is becoming an ecological problem. West Nile virus came to the U.S. East Coast from Plum Island. This island officially has an animal disease research lab. Unofficially, it's suspected as being a bioweapons research facility, anthrax being the most known suspect. However, several diseases have suddenly appeared over the years in that area with no history, West Nile and Dutch duck disease being two big ones. There is a book, Lab 257, that goes into greater detail. I live near there. Republicans, Democrats aren't as hostile as we're led on to believe and actually agree a lot, but are using our differences in beliefs to control us. You know it. OJ Simpson didn't do it. It was Jason Simpson. The LAPD was so convinced that they had their man that they tried to make the evidence fit the suspect rather than allowing the evidence to lead them to a suspect. OJ didn't do it. 
Nicole Brown was nearly decapitated and Ron Goldman was stabbed 20 plus times. The prosecution claimed the injuries were consistent with two knives being used and produced a stiletto knife, good for stabbing but not cutting, and a Swiss army knife, not really good for hurting anyone other than yourself. Ron Goldman had numerous defensive wounds and the injuries to his hands indicated that he had landed numerous blows, yet OJ had only a small cut on his hand with no other evidence of having been in a fight. The only evidence found in OJ's home was a few drops of his own blood which were contaminated with the preservative used in blood draws. Jason did it. Means, Jason was employed as a sous chef and had his own knife set and also owned a double-edged combat knife from his time in the military school. Motive. Jason was cooking alone at his restaurant that night and had specifically invited Nicole to come see him cook. She stood him up and went to Mezzaluna where Ron Goldman worked. Jason was known to be bothered by Nicole seeing men other than his father. Opportunity. Jason's time card that night was handwritten for a time much later than when the restaurant shut down. His alibi changed multiple times, but the last time anyone can definitely account for him is around 9.30 that night. The Kicker The day after the murders, OJ retained one of LA's top criminal defense attorneys for Jason and did not hire his own defense attorney until several days later. Interesting. The selfie filter trend, where people took selfies and it would show what your future aged version would look like, was actually delivered by the government to use for AI. Never use it. The government deliberately works on keeping the populace uneducated, from school funding being tied to local property taxes to allowing militant religious parties to politicize and censor science-based education. It's easier to manipulate an uneducated society by pitting it against itself across socio-economic and political lines. In the meantime, the civil servants meant to be representing us do favors for the wealthy in return for funding and insider trading privileges. That the FBI killed MLK due to him beginning to talk about wealth distribution, the critical falls in our economic system and class consciousness. They were worried he could have actually sparked change and awareness in those areas. Osama bin Laden wasn't killed the way they said he was, and they kept him alive for interrogation. Doubt he's alive today, but there's no way they'd just chuck the most wanted man in the world over the side of a boat. Bet they interrogated him, then killed him, or jailed him, who knows, or he died years before that. The CIA has overthrown dozens of democratically elected left-leaning foreign governments and the FBI killed Martin Luther King Jr. Not really a theory, so much as verifiable conspiracy facts. But plenty of people think they're bullshit, so I guess they qualify. There's a group of literary scholars from England who believe that the writings of William Shakespeare were actually written by Christopher Marlowe and the plays were performed under the name Shakespeare. Marlowe was at the peak of his career and had gotten into trouble with the authorities and the official story is that he was stabbed in the head outside a tavern and buried in a coffin with another man. It was like he just died and vanished overnight. William Shakespeare at the time who was friends with Marlowe, was very unsuccessful and, as far as I recall, wasn't writing or really doing much of anything. The only surviving writing of Shakespeare is a single copy of his signature. That's the only proof that he even knew how to write or read. As soon as Marlowe was dead, Shakespeare blew up. All of a sudden, he had a steady stream of plays involving themes like being exiled and faraway locations like Italy. Shakespeare wasn't a traveled person at all though Marlowe was known to have visited Italy and other European countries. Many of the stories Shakespeare is credited with involve themes which Marlowe would have been living through once he faked his death and fled his homeland. There's also another theory, that the stories were written by a nobleman who had Shakespeare take credit so that the crown wouldn't frown on the fact that his plays sometimes poked fun at the ruling class and likely strip him of his status. Either way, I think it's interesting and likely that one of these too is true. I'm not a Nazi colonies in Argentina or the moon conspiracist, but to me the idea that Hitler didn't die in Berlin not only tracks, but it's common sense Occam's razor to me. First, the only way we know what happened to him is the testimony of those who had the biggest stake in protecting him. There's no photos, no evidence of what happened, all we have is the word of some Nazis. Second, the only physical proof of his death actually proves the opposite. The Soviets claim to have recovered some of his remains, but when examined after the fall of the Berlin Wall, they were found to be that of a woman. So, not only does it not confirm his death, 
It confirms that there was at least an active and deliberate plan to fake the evidence of his death, which is not the same as faking his death. Lastly, plenty of Nazis escaped through various means, mostly to South America and some to Asia. I'm not saying Hitler did too, but clearly, the channels were in place to make it possible if not probable. I'm not saying that some boys from Brazil type evil plot was hatched, I'm just saying that we're not usually in the business of taking Nazis at their word. Hi BuzzFeed.